put a finger down if this holiday season you feel like you should be merry and bright because movies, holiday cards, Christmas music, oversized mall decorations tell you you should be, but in reality you're sad, anxious, lonely, broke, and or all of the above. Yeah, same. We make the holidays out to be this joyful time, but in reality, like most of us are going through it. And I don't even like want to wear this Christmas hat. So I'm going to take this off. That was just for the thumbnail. Um, this does not have hot cocoa. It's actually empty. Oh yeah. And Santa's dead. Happy freaking holidays. Cue the happy music. Holidays are supposed to be this splendid time of the year that's filled with loved ones and gingerbread cookies and presents and Santa and glitter and joy, right? False. Most people are overscheduled, lonely, sad, broke, broke again. I hate to be the Grinch that's coming through town with a sack of sad reality, but if you're not belting Mariah Carey or, you know, holding your family's hands on Thanksgiving and all peaceful and calm, you are not alone. Because let me tell you, people are about to snap. People are on edge this time of year. I swear so many people are like one Mariah Carey song away from ruining it all, okay? I mean like slapping grandma at the Christmas table, spitting in Santa's cookies, or ripping the Christmas lights off the house. There are a million reasons why this time of the year gets more complicated. Some people have issues like getting along with family at the dinner table. Now you're just gonna sit there and mimic Don't me. Don't do the thing with grow the hands. Up, grow up, grow up. Are you? Missing loved ones that have passed away. Stressing about eating more at Thanksgiving and having bodies body image issues, spending money on gifts, feeling obligated to get someone a gift, feeling lonely if you don't have loved ones to spend the holidays with, for a lot of students, they have a bunch of exams before break. I can't do it, Squidward. Should I go on? Oh my gosh, it all sounds so depressing saying it out loud, but it's true for so many people. Like, tis the freaking season of anxiety, loneliness, and depression. So many people deal with this, yet we make it out to be the season of like, hashtag live, laugh, love. Like, we're all smiling and baking gingerbread cookies as we are internally screaming for help. I'm fine. <laughs> coming out all loud and squeaky because really I'm fine. Happy early holidays. My gift to you are some tips from a psychological perspective of how to get through this time of the year. Also disclaimer, I'm not a professional in the mental health field, just someone with a camera who has some free time. So don't take this as gospel truth. The first step you can take is identifying your triggers and the emotions that come up around it. The holidays can be a triggering time for a lot of us, meaning it can bring up a lot of strong emotions based on cues in our environment that are upsetting to us. So identifying what it is that might make us more anxious or lonely or sad or angry during the holidays is really helpful so we're in touch with our emotions and we understand what's making us feel bad. Maybe you feel bad when your family comments on your weight or your relationship and by knowing that that's something that could come up that might get you upset, we can mentally prepare for it and be aware and present with our emotions instead of just being at Thanksgiving dinner and just feeling super triggered and angry and like not even knowing why. I think a lot of frustration around negative emotions is when we don't even understand what it really is. Like even under the umbrella of being upset, what are we really feeling? Anger, grief, jealousy, guilt. Knowing what that emotion is and what the trigger is can actually help us feel more in control. And even though the emotion might still come up, at least now we can breathe through it and like identify what it is and know what's going on with our body. The second step you can take is to set boundaries. Whether you're best friends with your family or you can like semi tolerate them for a couple hours every year Setting boundaries is important and healthy If you know that being around your family for multiple days is bad for your mental health because you feel disrespected Unloved and that can lead to bigger fights Setting boundaries is a really important tool to help keep things healthy and have Thanksgiving dinner not end in holes in the wall and pie on someone's face So maybe boundaries looks like saying, you know, hey, I can spend Thanksgiving dinner dinner with you, but I can't spend the whole weekend. Or having a frank conversation with family saying, hey, I can spend the holidays with you, but I am not going to participate in conversations about politics or my relationship. And maybe that will upset some people, but you have to understand that boundaries are not about pushing people away. It's about protecting yourself and safeguarding your feelings and knowing what you need to be okay and standing firm in that. Don't feel guilty setting boundaries. Like you should give yourself permission to say no for your own mental health. 
you are allowed to remove yourself from situations that don't serve you. And also, I just feel the need to throw this one in there. You need to set boundaries for yourself. Yes, you. I know when you're feeling down, it's really easy to just sit in those emotions and sulk and kind of just get really comfortable in a dark place. But know what's going to make you feel better or worse and draw that line for yourself. So for example, if you're going through a breakup, maybe don't binge eat Ben & Jerry's ice cream and watch The Notebook for the 19th time because you know Oh, it's gonna make you sob. The third step you can take is finding coping mechanisms that work for you. Also known as buy lots of alcohol. No, but for real, create a list in your head of things you can do when you start to feel anxious or overwhelmed or sad. Between Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, things can get really hectic. And when there's a lot of chaos around you and things you can't control, you should focus on what you can control, which is yourself and your own emotions and your own reactions. Can, can you pick me up? I'm scared. Maybe you can't control grandma drinking one too many rum and cokes or Uncle Bob's anger problems, but you can control what you do about it. Maybe that's doing breathing exercises or meditation before a family event, journaling after a stressful day with family, scheduling extra appointments with a therapist if you have one, or reaching out and leaning on your support systems like your friends. I know it can be really embarrassing to like share with your friends how crazy your family is, but good friends will understand and have your back if you tell them like, hey, I might need to FaceTime you like every 15 minutes from the bathroom to get through this Thanksgiving dinner. Number four is plan in advance. And this can apply to a lot of things. This can apply to booking travel. Like millions of Americans are flying or traveling by bus or train throughout the holidays and securing your ticket early or getting to the airport early can really ensure like peace of mind and even just eliminate one layer of a long weekend of frustration that might come. With Black Friday, you can plan which stores you're going to hit ahead of time. You can plan your shopping budget and that will save you the stress and the humiliation of loading up your bank account app at the front of the cash register at Forever 21 to see if you have like the $21 in your account to spend on a crop top. And my personal favorite plan in advance for those clapbacks, those Thanksgiving clapbacks. Plan for how you're going to respond to your grandma calling you fat or your aunt joking about you being single. Oh my gosh, there are some clapback memes that have me dying. I'll post a couple of my favorites over this, but oh my gosh, there's one <laughs> where an aunt's like, you know, those tattoos are a lifelong commitment. And the person's like, yeah, but your marriage wasn't. Oh! <laughs> he says she ain't had no nipple. Or the one where some aunt's trying to call you fat at Thanksgiving and is like, that's your third plate. And then you clap back with, yeah, and that's your third husband. Oh! No, stop. Some of those memes are just straight violation. <laughs> but for real, I know everyone has a family member that just runs their mouth a little bit too much and needs someone to humble them. So I am giving you permission this season to humble them. The fifth step you can take to stay sane during this holiday season is to take breaks from social media or just stay off social media altogether. I know during the holidays, we have time off from work, from school, and that gives us more time for Facebook and Instagram. But I found that social media can be extra bad for my mental health during the holidays because when everyone's posting about their Christmas vacation in Europe or how they just got proposed to in a winter wonderland it has a way of making us feel a little a little inadequate a little anxious that we're not as happy as they are that we don't have as much money as they do you know that feeling of seeing that instagram post with that person with their huge happy family and everyone's best friends and they're all like models and you're like i mean isn't that just kick you in the crotch spit on your neck fantastic <laughs> like you already feel lonely and then you go on instagram and see all of these friends givings and you're like okay got it check i i don't have friends or or on Christmas, you see people opening up a new Xbox present or the newest Louis Vuitton bag, and you're like, yep, okay, got it, also broke. You get the point. Number six is to check up on your friends. 
There are some really depressing stats out there. 68% of people are financially strained during the holidays. 66% of people have experienced loneliness. So number one, you're not alone. And number two, knowing that you're not alone and many other people are feeling this way, it's a great idea to reach out to people and also be their support systems. Let people know that you care. Just like how you're not gonna go on Instagram on Christmas and post that you're sad, because everyone else is posting, you know, smiles and opening up their Christmas presents. Other people are also probably not gonna post their true feelings, but are feeling them. So please, if there's anything you take from this video, be the friend you wish someone was to you. Reach out to at least one friend this holiday season and don't just do the generic happy holidays and then they say same. Like actually genuinely see how they're doing. And number seven, take the pressure off of the holidays being good. Let's keep it real. It's probably gonna be a shit show. <laughs> that's also that's possibly true don't feel like you just have to be happy because it's christmas because if you feel sad and you have to act throughout the whole holidays like you're happy that will make you feel so much worse and so much more alone christmas thanksgiving new year's it's literally just another day in the week another day that the sun rises and sets like it doesn't have to be anything yeah i know this video is just the holiday cheer you need but you're gonna get through this take a deep breath take a shot of whiskey. If you're not 21, you might be thinking, well, how am I supposed to get through this if I can't drink yet? Anyway, thanks so much for watching. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video, and I'm gonna leave you with some more Thanksgiving clapback memes because they're just iconic, but happy freaking holidays. Okay, I'm gonna put back on the Santa hat to like pretend this video wasn't depressing. Cheers.